Welcome to hashtag how to ruin for mayor and the eighth prerequisite to the grandfather clause. The state of the city pre-1968 is discussed in depth here. Let's listen. Eighth prerequisite. The state of the city pre-1968. Why? Well, because one can't want to be mayor and win, but defending president's immunity from prosecution they are at the vanguard of diplomacy on a local level. There are many more people in an international city than its local citizens over whom mayors only take precedence here. Outside of the city mayors are men where others politics and economics makes little men of most. Desiring a presidency and settling for local government, one must know that when removed, English revert from democracy to the default of king. For lack of any other authority than themselves some mistake autonomy granted for divine intervention thinking that they were born to be mayors as kings were kings. When in 1892 where the city is per se and as much as is recorded in history today had no mayor responsible for March 9th autonomous as prior to the incorporation of Shelby County, it reverted to a tax district where William D. Bethel was then referred to as the president of taxing district number 9. In the yellow fever epidemic Memphis lost a lot, but from 1879 to 1893 the demand on the cotton industry from the world grew and its commerce had to be taxed. Not so much about the money but more the accuracy of knowing how much of whatever was actually sold from year to year, the mayor's concern for citizens demands the city tax agricultural distribution, ensuring domestic tranquility. The availability of cotton produced in at levels where high society was distinguished in dress wherein many were businessmen but more in Memphis were clergy. Attracted to formality and belief in themselves religious communities allowed an outlet for African Americans to speak. The state of the city pre-1968 saw Brown v. Board of Education, the Memphis State 8 in an utter tragedy. Although some say Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka in 1954 was a major victory for the civil rights movement, others think integration diluted the strength and unity in African Americans' school. Opening as a junior high school in 1941, Hamilton's legacy would become a high school in 1943 and have its first graduates matriculating in 1945. At the end of World War I hatred may have been covered but it still was prevalently there. Denied to African Americans for so long, literacy had a tremendous effect on the culture where the proletariat had long been awoke and waiting to advance in education. As triumphs and benchmarks were reached in education rewarded by men and women of African descent loyalty is bred with every trophy, handshake, hug, or pat on the back. As without government we do so amongst ourselves at Hamilton it was so if whether or not government did, alumni would. Plessy v. Ferguson some say brought African Americans together by separating them from whites, while Brown v. The Board of Education put the most exceptional African American students in different environments far from home. Separate but equal may have been unconstitutional as though economically retard the pride bred with what little was provided was second to none. Integration of society introduced blacks to whites who may have never met otherwise in an educational setting where some feel blacks gave more than they got. With the city's demographics one could see why. The dilution of African American quality through Brown v. The Board of Education was dismissed as the Memphis State 8 enrolled in the city's university. Being escorted to class on September 18, 1959, the Memphis State 8 became the first African Americans to breach the walls of higher education in Memphis. Concerned with the bigger picture, few in charge have time to address issues that feed fewer for handling those which feed more, even though simpler issues may be preferred. The state of the city pre-1965 could have been less racially divided where social, political, and economic issues reflected appearance and not intellect. The eight were not allowed in the student union, to eat in the cafeteria or at any sporting events and had to be off campus by noon. With Grandy, Johnson, Jones, Looney, Love, McClellan, Prater and Simpson prepared as best as they could be and selected from amongst all others in the city, they were the future where setting foot on Memphis State University's campus was considered by many an accomplishment. Pre-1968 the state of the city in context with the greater nation and world could have done more to quell interracial strife, but the tragic events of April 4, 1968, proved blacks then weren't meant to achieve. Sure, a diverse community inclusive of African Americans who once were enslaved in theory is a beautiful thing. In practice however emotions and feelings run wild as subordinate to African Americans was where most whites would prefer not to reside. Many say the good doctor made mice of men while explaining himself such so that enmity in those with an earshot would be minimized and a calm of understanding comes over their hearts and minds. The mayor then was Henry Loeb, and though he may have been strictly by the book we can see that the problem wasn't solely Memphis but more so a reflection of the nation and world. One can make as many excuses as possible under the sun, but the mayor is responsible for residents and visitors alike, and there is no way he woke up that morning thinking he would no longer be on earth by that night. Freedom of speech is guaranteed in our first amendment, and we all think our positions matter, but milk died hopefully so that we may live and say what we want to say. Repealing Plessy v. Ferguson for Brown v. The Board of Education of Topeka integrated society allowing the Memphis State 8 to enroll, but witnessing the tragedy some thought it necessary and others not so much so. When left to our own devices, we create government qua government that Brown v. The Board of Education diluted in the African American community in Memphis. Previously denied from higher education in the city and with integration in full swing many wondered when Memphis State University would be so as in 1959. In many ways we knew not how discrimination added to a flame of social, political, and economic indifference that peaked with King's assassination. 
That's all we have for the session on how to run for mayor. Join us next week for our ninth prerequisite as we discuss the state of the city post-1968. Thank you for your time and consideration. We'll see you then.